once again the games were brought in sound into the homes of the people. And that is a very brief glimpse of the sound broadcasting. Well, this is Olympic year and the credit for the success of the first Olympics has always gone to Baron Pierre de Coubertin, who was a brilliant French educator and scholar. Here in Much Wenlock in Shropshire, there's an account of a native of the town, Dr. William Penny Brooks, who has a good claim at least to share the honour of having established the Olympic Games. There was certainly an Olympian society in Wenlock, who in 1850 held their first annual Games. In the early days, the Games started out really as quite a, a logical extension to country Games, generally. There were quits and football and cricket and bucolic events like chasing a pig and an old woman's race for a pound of tea, that sort of thing. <laughs> and then gradually as time went on, by the 1860s, which were the heyday of the Games, it assumed much more Olympian character. The day started always with speeches as a procession formed up outside the main inns in the town and then led by a, a herald mounted on a white horse and by the mayor and corporation and the tilters. The procession wound its way through the town and then arrived here and then much speechifying again the brass band played and the games were declared open. In 1860, Olympian Games were held in Athens when the biggest prize was called the Wenlock Prize and given to the winner of the marathon. He was certainly involved very early on in uh, plans for a great international athletics festival um, and much earlier than the first Olympics in, in 1896 he was involved in uh, correspondence with the King of Greece about founding uh, an Olympian society in Greece on the lines of the Wenlock Olympian Society. However, the world may well have forgotten Brooks as co-founder of the Olympics but it should never forget him in another connection. William Penny Brooks was the man directly responsible for the introduction of physical education into our schools. The first Olympics were held in Athens in 1896 and by this time Brooks was dead and the records don't show the amount of support that he gave. He was rather like one of Sir Walter Scott's famous heroes who we quote as being unwept, unhonoured and unsung. Unsung except here in Much One Love.